Hi, everyone. Welcome to our webinar on how to write an effective Common App essay. I'll take two minutes to wait for others to join in and then we'll begin our session. You can write any queries that you may have in the chat box and I'll try and respond to all of them at the end of the session. Here is some information on your screen about this webinar. Make sure you have registered on our website. If you haven't done so already, please do that. Right, so let's talk about how to craft an effective college essay. My name is Mansi Kumar, and today I'll help you write your Common App essay. As you can see on the screen, we've got some links, some um, a website address and some phone numbers. You can note these now. I will be sharing them later also. Right, so let's talk about why your college essay is so important. After all the academic um, achievements and the extracurricular, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, activities that you've done, all the accomplishments that you have. Now, why is this essay so important that we have to have a special session for it? Well, an impactful and a well-written essay is critical as it can tip the balance in favor of your admission. See, when colleges get applicants of similar um, ac academic achievements, uh, similar um, awards, similar certificates, et cetera, they need to choose between applicants with similar attributes and qualifications. This is where your essay can help them make up their minds. According to a 2012 survey from National Association for College Admission Counseling, 56% admissions counselors said that the application essay plays an important role in admissions decisions. Research for your college well before beginning to write your essay so that you can understand what kind of student they are looking for. Do their values and mottos align with you? Remember, this is a place where you will be, um, you know, establishing the foundation of your working career and where you will be spending the next four years of your prime um, uh, life years. So it is very important that the college, the university's mottos and their values, they align with yours. This will help you write an essay which resonates with the core values of both you and your college. Remember that everything else in your application is mostly a number. It's a grade, it's a certificate, it's an achievement, it's a description of what you did, etc. Your essay is where the admissions officer gets to see the real you you get the chance to present your best side and prove to the college why you are such a great choice for the college and why the college is such a great choice for you. Use this opportunity to your benefit. Remember that the admissions officer is probably a friendly and a curious kind of person whose sharp eyes read hundreds, tens of essays probably every day. And they've been doing this for years. So make sure that your essay aligns with your resume or your activity sheet. Oh, sorry, excuse me, overall, right? So for example, if your resume shows that you volunteered as an environmental activist, then do not state otherwise in your essay. Everything else, everything has to support your application so that the final goal of getting admission is achieved. Choose your prompt very carefully and follow the tips and advice which will be given to you in this webinar to craft your effective college essay. Now on my screen, I'm sharing few common app prompts. I would request each one of you to go through these prompts carefully and read them properly here. So the common app prompts, uh, you can pick any one out of these seven. The minimum words are 250. Uh, do not write less than that, fewer than that. And the maximum words are 650. Please do remember that the computer, um, whenever you'll be uploading your application, it will be done on some form of computer or laptop, whatever. And it will be probably through an online portal. 
so that software will not accept any um, essay which is above the maximum words even 651 as uh, words essay will be rejected so make sure you are well within the word limit set by the college in this case it is 650 words take 2 minutes and read the prompts Right, so I'm sorry, here we go again. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is the correct one. So if you can see all the uh, prompts, they talk about you as a person and they mostly talk about some obstacle, some period of struggle, some failure, something with, with which you struggled maybe. And they're pretty open-ended. You can talk about almost anything. We'll talk later about, uh, we'll talk in detail about what exactly you should talk about. I'll give you some general guidelines, but here just see the prompts, they're very open-ended. They allow you to come up with unique circumstances of your life, which you may want to share, any unique experience which you may have had, anything which helped you grow. If you see the seventh prompt, it's pretty open-ended. You can absolutely write, you can share an essay on any topic of your choice. So apart from the six prompts, which are specific, the seventh prompt is absolutely open-ended where you can upload any essay which you may have written earlier or which you may write now. Now, let's talk a little bit about the do's and the don'ts. First things first, the most important thing, please make sure you start your essay with plenty of time at hand, in your hand. Remember, a rush job will eventually show cracks. You might get so stressed with the idea of writing an essay that you're not able to give out your best. So make sure you start the essay well within time. Pick a prompt which resonates with you. It should say something to you. It should mean something to you. You may pick two prompts for now. Start sketching the essays. And as you develop the essays, uh, you can see which one you have answered better, <clears throat> which one you like better. The idea is to write an original non-fiction story about yourself. Control and pace your narrative. Write the story in your own voice. You can use idioms and uh, higher grade vocabulary, but only if it sounds natural and well-placed. It should not sound like uh, something which you are writing just to impress someone. Please choose an event which was fairly recent. Do not delve into your long gone past. When I was three years old, I had a setback. This is what I learned. No, you can refer to your long gone past, but make sure it connects with your present. Make sure to keep the past um, references short and make sure again, I'm repeating, link it to your present circumstances. You could, for example, say that I was very young when I saw maybe some famous cricketer or maybe you uh, attended a ballet recital from there you had the idea of becoming a dancer or, or a sports person or a scientist and then you move the story so the reference to your past has to be very short and very relevant your key takeaways or your learnings they ought to be the highlight of this rendition make sure your story answers the prompt completely and accurately that's very important you can read essays uh, written by other students to get an idea of the writing skills and writing styles involved. You can search online uh, for the, there are lots of essays which are successful common app essays and you can read those to get an idea of what others have written to get an idea of better what you can write. You can also read analysis of essays so you can understand what to incorporate and what to avoid. I will be doing a very short um, essay and its analysis uh, later in this session today, right? 
Okay, now these are the do's, now the don'ts. The first, foremost, the absolute, non-negotiable don't is please do not plagiarize. Never ever. It is better to submit an average but original essay than to submit an essay which is scintillating, which is brilliant, but is plagiarized. And do remember, they will be putting your essays through a software, uh, the plagiarism checker. And um, anything above an acceptable level will be absolutely um, rejected. Now, avoid dialogues in your essay. Don't put too many dialogues. One or two are fine maybe if they add to the story, but don't uh, write too many dialogues in your essay. Avoid pop references, slangs, colloquial express expressions, abuses, and double meaning words or phrases. Avoid intense cultural references, unless you can explain them really well and they, link, uh, they are linked to your growth. Please avoid criticizing family members. This is no time to pick fights with your siblings. Avoid criticizing your family, your friends, your relatives, your neighbors, any community in particular, any group in particular, teachers, authors, governments, cultures, religions, laws, customs, and any policies. No political opinions or suggestions, please. Do not pick sides. This is your essay. It's not a debate or a speech. So events are important, but don't forget to detail your learnings from them. Now that we have spoken about the do's and the don'ts, let's talk about a few tricks and tips. You can use the narrative or descriptive style of writing. You can use literary devices like juxtaposition, oxymorons, symbolism, irony, metaphors, etc. You can use strong verbs and rich adjectives to conjure vibrant imagery in the mind of, the, of your reader. You can liken your experience to an idiom or a piece of wisdom or a saying. Let each new sentence in your essay further or expand upon the idea by providing new information. You can write about different things provided you link them together in your essay. Make sure you mention your learning or takeaway, that that is your key takeaway from your experience. The idea is to show your growth through the story. The idea is to show your transformation. If you help one person, great, talk about that. We don't need to show an essay in which you are leading a group of 100, 200 people. If you did that, great. But if you didn't, fair enough. Even if you made the difference in one person's life, that's, that's a good idea. That's a good thing to write upon. Please use humor very carefully. If the admissions officer does not share your sense of humor, it could backfire very badly. So use it very sparingly uh, and very um, sensitively. Steer clear of excessive dark humor, self-deprecation, self-criticism, and self-praise. You can use a little bit of all of these. We'll talk about that later. Now, remember your achievements. Uh, say you are talking about a struggle, and or maybe you had a goal. You, uh, you wanted to be the class president, or you wanted to swim a marathon, or run a marathon, or whatever. Whatever your achievements are, Remember, they should not be shown as coming as a, at a cost to others. Oh, I didn't tell my best friend about the timing of the marathon because he was a great runner. So I went and I won. No. I won because the lead swimmer uh, became sick on that day. No. They, your achievements or your transformation, it should be fair and well-deserved. You should have done something to deserve it. Be humble and acknowledge other people's contributions in your journey. Never justify any wrongdoing, irrespective of the provocation which, may, which you may have experienced or any positive results if they occurred. So any wrongdoing cannot be um, justified by something good happening later. No, we can't do that in your essay. 
this essay is about you. It's not about your friend. It's not about your dog. It's not about your guitar, your neighbor or your family. Make sure the spotlight stays on you. You are given 650 words. Make sure each word and sentence contributes to portraying you as a positive, relatable, and a believable character. There are a few examples of stories that you can use. You can show um, how you help somebody else win. You can talk about that. Maybe your little sister was getting bullied at school or your younger brother or somebody else, or your friend, maybe they were facing some problem, some struggle, you help them overcome it. But remember, um, the spotlight should stay on you, like I said, and uh, avoid being too self-congratulatory. Rather, show this as an opportunity which you took to help others. So the spotlight, again, has to be on you. Now, you can talk about overcoming your personal demons. Did someone help you? Who and how? Maybe you were scared of um, swimming, uh, I mean, the water. Maybe you were scared of um, joining the music band or you were scared of joining an art class, anything, whatever, okay? Now, you can also talk about if you were struggling with a negative environment. Focus on how you overcame the struggles. Stay away from blaming others who may have caused that negative environment, no matter how righteous you are, no matter how correct you are about it. Stay away from blaming others who created or nurtured this environment for you. Rather, shine the spotlight on how you overcame all the odds. Again, another thing could be that perhaps a hobby helped you overcome some academic or personal barriers or it helped you discipline yourself, or it inculcated an appreciation of others in some manner, maybe it helped you realize something, something on those lines. Also, another thing you can talk about is learning from others. So uh, again, make sure the story is about you and not them. Address your achievements in a reflective manner. Do not be grandiose or pretentious or even excessively modest. It should be, it is what it is, that kind of an attitude where you accept that you, yes, you succeeded, you achieved something, but the focus is on the journey, not the um, eventual uh, place. So acknowledge other people's contribution to your story, but do not shower excessive praise on them as there you run the risk of sounding fake. Take your moment, take your pride, take um, the praise which you rightfully deserve. Think of yourself as a storyteller. This is my favorite bit. Try to think of yourself as a storyteller who's sitting around a cozy fire uh, with your friends and family. You know, they are sitting all around you as your listeners. Are they impressed? Do they look bored? Do they want to move on to the next storyteller? Or are they really interested in your story? No, no, you finish your story first. Think of yourself like that and the best story will come out of you. You can also record yourself telling your story. You can share this with your friends and family. Do they have any questions? Would they want to know, learn more? Are there any details you are missing out? This kind of an activity will help you structure your essay better. Now, pick your prompt very carefully, but do remember the admissions officers, they have no preference for whichever prompt you choose. As long as it's well-written and it's original, you're on the right track. Uh, the common app prompts are diverse enough to allow you to pick literally anything, like I mentioned. So therefore you can brainstorm your best stories and uh, you can pick the one which aligns the best with the prompt. You can do it reverse also. Now that you have picked a prompt, please read and then reread your prompt. Remember to stick to your prompt. Whatever your essays, whatever your stories, it should answer the prompt very particularly, very clearly. It should answer the entire prompt, not just a part of it. Weave your story, keeping your prompt in mind. Remember to stick to your prompt. Each sentence should link to the prompt or forward the story as per the prompt. I'm sure all of you have seen movies. Have you ever seen a scene in a movie which doesn't connect to the scene before it or it doesn't uh, you know, help the scene which is coming after it? So think of your essay as something like that. 
while editing read the prompt again and evaluate your story according to the prompt now these are all the tips do's and don'ts which we have talked about uh, before writing the essay now let's talk about actually sitting yourself down and writing the essay let's begin writing your essay everybody wants to write a scintillating in introduction we all want the perfect first opening scene the or the audience looking at it will consider your movie a hit every every writer wants that perfect opening sentence the scintillating introduction which is going to impress the reader like anything the perfect opening statement is the bane of most writers so there is a lot of pressure on you on writing the perfect opening statement which will make your essay stand out remember to make your essay simple and emotional the sparkling first and last sentences will come to you eventually so don't don't use this as an excuse which many students do that oh i haven't thought of the perfect opening uh, statement so let me delay writing my essay no start writing your essay write start writing with a simple sentence doesn't matter you can always change the opening later so don't use not getting the opening statement as an excuse to not write starting uh, beginning writing your essay start your essay regardless use effective writing hooks to begin your essay use a fact a dialogue a question a statement or an imagery or a setting of an event to begin your essay you can always change this if you think of something better i don't generally advocate starting your essay with a quote which is ascribed to someone else mahatma gandhi said this according to martha luther luther king um aristotle has said uh, you know it's a very cliched beginning so try and avoid it unless of course it really impacts your essay in a big way then you can consider it you can start with a bold statement to grab attention but do remember don't cross the line into offensiveness or bad taste another issue with using a bold beginning is that the rest of the essay uh, you know it risks uh, falling short of increased expectations from the start because your first line was so killer or it was so bold your essay has to come through sometimes that doesn't happen so you can tone it down okay so make sure you avoid using cliche writing structures i uh, use them only if you can link the essay with them and present your own unique view again do not worry about the beginning for now start writing and keep looking for the killer essay now i'm going to show you on screen a few examples of opening hooks and how you can use them effectively one second here we are yes uh, i'll give you 2 minutes to read them and you can use them uh, not these in particular but you can use something like this so these are the opening hooks these are the opening lines which you can use to begin your essay first is um, a line of direct quoted speech i have always been lonely dad i'm broke then you have the direct question then you have the debate then the flashback technique then you have the short punchy line with single detail then the confident statement and then the sentence with rich imagery i'll give you a minute to read them right you can find lots of opening uh, hooks um, on the net in, in uh, on the internet also and you can of course come up with your own now let's talk about the body of your essay which is ideally three paragraphs because it is 650 words um, generally i would suggest starting um, structuring it with the introduction then the three body paragraphs and then the conclusion so we've al already spoken about the introduction now let's talk about the body paragraphs of which there ideally ought to be three So the major part of your essay is here in these three paragraphs. Each paragraph is a microcosm of the entire essay with its own introduction, um, explanatory, and concluding sentences. So you can include transitions in the last sentence of your paragraph so that it connects with the next paragraph. 
and it brings every piece of information together. The body paragraphs of your essay should take your story further and develop it. Uh, you can provide evidence and facts which link your story. You can use transition words to link paragraphs. These can be simple words like, on the other hand, therefore, however, eventually I understood, etc. Something like that. So reveal your essay layer by layer like peeling an onion. The reader ought to feel interested in reading more. Do not give away all your suspenses in the first um, line, paragraph, whatever. Open the essay with a question or a mystery to build suspense and hook your reader. So keep revealing enough information, you know, to keep the reader hooked. And you can build excitement and set the stage for the big reveal. Remember the concluding sentences of any paragraph, they carry an extra weight. When we read um, a piece of text, most readers, they pause momentarily before moving to the next paragraph. This results in the last uh, sentence echoing in their minds. Use these extra milliseconds to make a lasting impression on your reader. Here you can use powerful climatic language to end on a meaningful or even an emotional point for the reader to ruminate on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right, now that we've spoken about the introduction and the body paragraphs, let's talk about writing the conclusion. The ideal conclusion is linked to your introduction. As you may well know, circle back to your introduction and state it again. So if in your introduction you said, um, let's say, let's take an example. As I stood on the, at the end of the winning, the race, the, the line, as I stood at the end of the running line, I thought to myself, all my trainings, uh, all my training of all these months has got me here. All the training which I did for so many months has brought me here. Now see that the writer has not told you whether he has won the race or whether he has lost the race. He's talking about looking back and thinking, oh, all these months that I trained, I used to get up at six in the morning. I used to miss my uh, parties. I used to miss going out. I took care of my diet and my training schedule. All that has brought me here. Now what that here is can be revealed later. That can be revealed in the conclusion. You can talk about that now, okay? So paraphrase and use different writing techniques to link your conclusion to the introduction. Make sure you tie up all loose ends in your essay. There should not be any things which are not settled, any questions which are not answered. All suspense should be resolved and no mysteries should be left unsolved. Do not leave your reader on a cliffhanger. Remember, there is no sequel coming up. There is no part two of your life's journey or your essay coming up. So everything which you want to say, you have to say it here in this essay. So don't leave your reader on a cliffhanger. That means do not be ambigu ambiguous about the ending. The example I took about uh, you running the race, make sure in the conclusion you answer what eventually happened. Don't just leave it there. The reader thinking, okay, what happened? Did you win the race? Did you lose the race? Did you come first, second, third? What, what actually happened? So make sure you resolve all that. Bear in mind that the reader will remember your ending sentences. So make sure they are powerful and impactful. Your essay should end on a very clear, positive, happy, and or hopeful note. It shouldn't end in a depressive or on a negative note. Maybe if you lost the race, you can say, after all those months of training, I realized that I still lacked something. Here's me, you know, hoping for the best and next year I'll be back and something like that. Even if you lost the race, that's okay. But you can show that you're hopeful about the future. Now, a very important point, proofreading your essay. Proofreading is an essential step before submitting your essay. Don't let the first person who's reading your essay be the admissions officer. Proofread your essay yourself. Now, get an expert to do it for you. Once you have proofread it yourself, get another pair of skilled eyes to look at it. Request for suggestions and constructive feedback. Incorporate the suggestions which you receive. 
make sure that the suggestions which you receive and which you incorporate, they do not introduce any inaccuracies or discrepancies in your essay. So correct your discourse errors or writing inconsistencies, if any. Take care, please take very good care to check your essay again. Even the tiniest grammatical and spelling errors, or if any, they, can, they may affect your chance of admission. And even running your essay through softwares like Grammarly or anything um, equivalent, sometimes even those softwares are not able to catch certain words which are used incorrectly or certain phrases which are not used correctly. Grammar, uh, punctuation, show sure, they'll check. But the meaning, the content, and the context, that is a little difficult for AI to check even now, I believe. So get an expert to check your essay. Now I'll be uh, taking up a short essay and we'll do the analysis after that here. I hope everybody can see the screen. So here is a sample essay. I'll give you a couple of minutes to read it and then we'll talk about the analysis. All right, this is a very short piece of text because um, due to paucity of time, I wanted to take a short um, you know, piece and analyze it with all of you to give you an idea of what is required and how great essays are written. Now, if you see this essay, the first sentence is so impactful. It is followed by a very sarcastic and mocking, but very funny second sentence. Remember what I said about humor? Now, this kind of humor, which is very self-deprecating, it does not annoy or, you know, hurt anyone else. See the first uh, sentence, a blue seventh place athletic ribbon. Now, who in the world really celebrates coming seventh in anything, in, in a race or in any athletic meet? We all know that the first three places are the ones that count. Maybe if you get the fourth or the fifth place, that's probably relevant, but definitely not a seventh place. So then the writer says that every day as I walk into my living room, the award mockingly congratulates me. So you see, she's already talking about something which is mocking at her. But we re remember the award is inanimate, inanimate. It has not come to her room on its own. She's the one who's probably placed it there. So if it is mocking her every day, that means she probably wants it. Let's see. The introduction covers, uh, it contains loads of details. See, uh, cover up, blocks, other lanes, arms up, seventh place, all these details are given there. In this short piece of uh, writing, the writer conveys her inadequacies by calling it her imperfection. Now see here, she's talking about, but I never dare to wipe away the memory. Now, this is now telling you why she has kept that seventh place ribbon and she herself has kept it. Now you are clear. She's the one who's kept it there because she wants that daily reminder of her imperfection. She needs that seventh place. What does this tell you about her? I think this talks about somebody who doesn't give up, somebody who's not afraid of trying and failing, somebody who has failed earlier but is now using that memory of her failure to become a better version of herself. See the transformation. See how she's using that failure to show growth in her. How she's using that reminder to become better, to work harder. Second paragraph, she talks about how she joined the swim team. She is unexpectedly assigned. Now, this shows that she's aware of her inadequacy. Okay. All this is a classic example of how to turn your weakness or negative attributes into your strengths and positive attributes. 
Now, words which convey emotion, mockingly congratulate, stressing for hours, these make you sit up as the reader and pay attention. Okay, something huge is going on with this girl. Let me read more. Details add to the richness. She is talking about my mantle instead of my room. That's a very great detail. So it tells you exactly where the award is placed in her room. We can all picture it, literally. Um, she talks about lap 14 in the second paragraph instead of just calling it the race. Now that also gives you another detail. Lap 14, 14 laps are pretty tough. I mean, tough for most people. Then she talks about, I must be winning. This shows you that she's probably complacent. And then look at the great sports, uh, the great storytelling technique. Look at the last sentence. She thinks that she is winning, but what is actually happening? She left the pool two minutes after the second to last competitor who now stood with her friends wearing all her clothes. We all know that after swimming, it takes some time to go take a shower, change your clothes, take off the wet costume, and then, you know, obviously put on your street clothes or whatever, and then come outside of the, um, uh, cloakroom. So imagine the last, the second to last competitor had gone in, changed their clothes and had come out and this girl was still in the pool and she leaves the pool two minutes after that. What does that tell you about her prowess, about her swimming skills? They're not probably too great, right? But look at the way she's talking about herself. She uses a great storytelling technique that is the sports commentary. She's building suspense and it promises a great end and her writing does not um, fail. She absolutely comes through. The end is absolutely unexpected, unexpected. And it leaves the reader in splits. I'm sure all of you are laughing right now. Even though the writer has clearly failed in her mission. After reading this very short piece, what is the impression you are left with? What will you take away from this particular essay? Yes, she failed. Did she give up? No. Did she forget her failure? No. Okay, so this is a very good example of how you can write your essay and what is required from your essay. I hope this session has been uh, fruitful for all of you. Now, the best tip you will ever get, don't write an essay that Shakespeare can write or one that George Orwell can write. Instead, Focus on writing an essay which only you can write. An essay which only you can write, not even Shakespeare can write that essay for you. That's the kind of original essay which the colleges are looking for. And each one of you is absolutely capable of writing. it. The smallest story, the smallest experience, the smallest achievement, it is just about how you present it. We are not, the colleges are not looking for any earth shattering, Mount Everest climbing or um, winning some huge Olympic medal, that, that kind of achievement from you. If you help one person smile, that's great. So happy writing. And the second best tip that you'll ever get follows. That is connect with us at GoToUniversity. For UAE, we have Sara, who's the regional manager. Her mobile and WhatsApp number is given on the screen along with her email ID. Then for India, we have Varun Ayer. He's the senior admissions consultant. His mobile and WhatsApp is also given here along with his email ID. I'll give you a couple of minutes to get this information uh, down. Uh, That the recording will be available uh, pretty soon on the website. I think you can check in a few hours or so, maybe tomorrow, and you can get the recording of this session. Any questions, um, anything else I can help you with? Any personal questions you might have, any idea which you have, which you want to run by me, uh, please do let me know. Guys, you can ask me literally anything you want, oh, as long as it's about your common FSA. Yeah. Um, do all the universities require an essay? 
Well, this is really a question for your consultant, but to the best of my knowledge, yes, most of them do. This is the common app essay which we talked about. Uh, some universities also ask you to give additional supplementary essays, but really you should ask your, um, your uh, admissions uh, consultant to help you out here. Okay, these applications are for UK. This is for the US, um, uni um, US universities, common app essay. Okay, how early should you start practicing or drafting? Uh, I think pretty soon. You should start as early as you can because that gives you, you know, this is a very creative part of your application and creativity can't really be rushed. And it's a very important part. So like I said earlier, rushed jobs will show cracks eventually. So start the essay maybe today or tomorrow, but do start it. And then you can slowly build it up. You can slowly keep writing it, but try and set a time limit for yourself. Let's say today is the 25th of August, is it? Okay, let's say today is 25th of August. So set a target that, okay, by 20th of September, maybe I should be able to complete my essay. Of course, it all depends on your uh, school, um, your uh, academics and other uh, commitments which you may have. But I would very strongly suggest you to start ASAP. The sooner you start, the better it's going to come out and the more time you have to get it edited by somebody who's more skilled and also to reread it. Okay, do we have any more questions? Uh, yes, okay. Hello, ma'am. Should we write an essay including a specific university name? No, not for the Common App essay because this essay will be going in to multiple uh, colleges, universities. So for the Common App essay, please do not mention any specific university name. In fact, if you notice the prompts, they do not talk about college or university at all. So there is no need for you to write it. I mean, yes, if your story talks about when you went to Harvard and something happened to you, that's a different thing altogether. But you do not need to mention any specific college or university here. Right, hi, I can see someone has just joined. Okay, we are just wrapping up today. Maybe you can join in uh, the next session later. Okay, I think I have more questions. Writing an essay to enter medicine can be more difficult. Okay, um, I think you're talking more about the personal statement. The Common App essay is a common essay which goes to a lot of universities in the US. It does. It is not course specific. You, uh, you could be wanting to study history or medicine or computer engineering, and the essay does not have to reflect any of that. The essay has to answer the prompts and the prompts do not talk about your subjects. All right, more questions in the chat box or in the question and answer box. I'll give you all a couple of minutes to think of more. Oh, there is one more, I think. Yeah, you can uh, you can see the recording. Uh, I think tomorrow it will be uploaded by tomorrow, I'm sure. So you can check the recording and you can get all the tips and the tricks again. Yes, you will. Yes, you will have access to the recording of this session. You can take a look at it again. Yes, you will have access to all the content which I have shared today. And trust me, the sooner you start writing, the easier it's going to be. It's usually the beginning which is toughest. Once you start writing, you will get a hang of it. It will come to you. Don't worry. So only worry about starting right now. Don't worry too much about where it's going to end. Start writing your essay. Like I said earlier, you can pick two prompts right now. You can just start writing an essay on your own and maybe fit it, fit it to the prompt later. Then you can tweak it. 
it can be about your experience a traveling experience a sporting achievement any issue which you had at school maybe you fought with your best friend maybe you learned something from your um grandmother or something something anything of that sort and do remember guys no matter what you write it's going to be great i'm sure write from your heart be original and you won't go wrong and of course you can connect with us for your uh, questions and your editing requests we are there to help you i've shared the numbers on screen for those who have come in last you can just uh, note these down probably yes you will have access to this all right so i'll take my leave today and i wish you all lots of good luck in your uh, college applications and happy writing to all of you bye bye and take care